great creation. May we always recognize and acknowledge God's presence. Come now and bring your best to worship our God. We are here to proclaim that God lives in and through us. May this worship and this Sabbath day be blessed. We are here. We are ready. May our worship now begin. Please remain standing and join your voices in our opening hymn, Sweet Sweet Spirit, found on page 391. <laughs> And he said to them, 
The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. Again he entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. And they watched him to see whether he would heal him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. So he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come here. And he said to them, Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. And he looked around at them, at them with anger, grieved at the hardness of heart, and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately held counsel with the Herodians against him. How to destroy him. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> Thanks be to God. We will now see one verse of Jesus loves me as the children and you need to come forward for their special moment. to 
to the pond with the mommy duck following and puts him in the water so everybody was safe. Isn't that a great story? Huh? You know, I think that guy was kind of like a duck hero, don't you think? Do you think it mattered what day of the week it was for that guy to do that for those ducks? Because that guy cared about those little ducks, right? And you wanted to keep them safe, and you wanted to make their life good, right? So he didn't care if it was a Monday or a Thursday or a Sunday. He wouldn't have cared. If he was there, he was going to help the duck because she needed help with her babies. Well, Jesus did the same thing today in our Bible story. There was a man in the synagogue on Sunday, and his hand was all crumpled up. And Jesus healed that man on Sunday. Now, we don't think much about that today, do we? Because everything's, I I remember when I was a kid, things weren't open on Sundays, but um, everything's open on Sundays now. But Jesus told the Pharisees who were criticizing him for breaking a law that he couldn't do anything on a Sunday. Jesus is like, if it is going to help someone and make their life better, it doesn't matter if it's on a Sunday or not, because being compassionate or caring about people is much more important than what day of the week it is. So we need to remember that we always need to help people. It doesn't matter what day of the week it is. Okay? So let's say a prayer. Remember the Sabbath. 
and keep it whole. As Joe mentioned, and I've alluded to, um, the Sabbath day, to, which to Christians is this day, is Sunday. The original Sabbath day to the Hebrew people, of course, was Saturday, uh, because that is the seventh and last day of the week. Uh, anybody tell me why Christians change their Sabbath to Sunday? Easter was on Sunday. So each Sunday we sort of celebrate a mini Easter. Uh, we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And, and the Sabbath for Christians uh, from shortly after the resurrection of Jesus Christ has always been Sunday. So we're here on Sunday. And that's been the tradition of Christians because actually here it doesn't say what day the Sabbath is. It just says to keep the Sabbath, remember it, and to keep it holy. So for Christians, for us, the Sabbath, our Sabbath day um, has been, uh, will be, and is today uh, still on Sunday. Uh, and so here we are on Sunday morning, trying to follow that commandment, I guess. Uh, and it would make us think, well, what about the rest of the day? Um, are we supposed to be continuing to follow the Sabbath on the rest of this day, and what does it really mean to remember the Sabbath and to keep it holy? Does it mean we're here for an hour and 15 minutes on Sunday morning and that's it? Uh, what does it mean? Uh, so that's a little bit of what I wanted to talk about this morning. In thinking about this scripture where Jesus was actively doing some things, as John said in one case, to help others on this Sabbath day, what does it mean? For us as Christians today, to remember the Sabbath and to keep it whole. So, pray. Gracious God, may the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts and minds be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. One of the most uh, often heard refrains um, these days, and in the past several years actually, is, I'm too busy. There's just too much going on these days, you know? And we get exhausted. You know, we wear ourselves out each and every day. And my friends, I really think we are too busy. Our lives are too full of commitments and too much responsibility. Like it or not, we live in a very busy society which encourages us to stay busy. Even over the holiday weekend, uh, you know, you're supposed to be doing things. You're supposed to be gathering together. You're supposed to be traveling. You're supposed to be doing this and that. We're, we're, and we're constantly bombarded with information, uh, with depressing news a lot of the times, with, with decisions that we have to make with marketing at every turn that tells us we need more of whatever it is that they are advertising or, or pushing on us. Uh, and of course we have kids who need our attention or we have um, uh, parents who are asking more and more of us and need more and more of our attention. And of course we have the church asking you to serve in vacation Bible school or to help out with the food pantry, or to serve on the board of deacons, or, or serve on our session as an elder, you know, and make a three-year commitment to do those things. I mean, you know, even the church is causing us to be so busy. We're just too busy. Would you agree? We're just too busy. Joan definitely is too busy. She's nodding her head here. No, I don't you need to stand here and tell you that you're too busy. But what I am called to stand here and say is that I don't really believe that God intends for us to live that way, being too busy all the time. These hectic days and rushed lives, I don't think those are really what God is calling us to be as Christians in the 21st century. I believe that God desires even more than we do sometimes that we need to slow down, that we need to pause. We need to realize that life isn't designed to be rushed through, thinking that we're busy and that they, what we've got to do is fix.
finish this so that we can move on to the next thing. As a matter of fact, God commands us in the fourth commandment of the most important commandments of all the Ten Commandments. He commands us to take a Sabbath, a day of rest. And that day of rest, as he explained right there in the scriptures in Exodus, is made for us. It's made for us to rest. And Jesus, in the passage uh, that we heard Marcia read this morning, is telling us there, right there in Mark, that the Sabbath was made for our well-being. Sabbath was and is still intended to be a day of grace and to be a gift from God for us. The Sabbath was made for us. We're not made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was provided for us, and we are commanded to remember the Sabbath and to keep it home. The Sabbath and all the other commandments as well were and are gifts that help us live in relationship with God and in relationship with other people. If we had spent our entire lives being too busy and moving from one thing to the other over and over and over again, how are we going to develop those relationships with our God and with our neighbor? No, God says you need to pause. You need to take that time to slow down relax and to offer yourself to God and for others. And in our gospel passage this morning we're meant to see the glaring difference in the Pharisees. Remember the Pharisees were the, were the religious leaders, the religious scholars, the religious uh, uh, theologians, the religious upper echelon of the Hebrew society at the time. And, and they were attempting to enforce the letter of the law. You can't do anything on the Sabbath. Even if you harvest a, a grain of wheat and pop it in your mouth. No, that's what you can't do. It. They were attempting to enforce every little letter of the law while blatantly ignoring that injured man with a withered hand right in front of him. They came into the synagogue where they were gathered and where Jesus was gathered there and people were listening to him uh, preach and teach. Uh, Jesus invites that man with a withered hand to come front and center before that whole gathered religious community. The religious community that is supposed to be following all of these Ten Commandments and the 613 other commandments that the Hebrew people and even the Jews of today still believe that you should follow. Um, and they were saying, okay, right, right in front of them, everyone, Jesus asked the Pharisees that question. Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath or not? Can I, in other words, can I do good for this man on the Sabbath? Is that lawful or not? The Pharisees, of course, refused to answer. They didn't want to answer that question the way that he had phrased it. Of course people should do good. But, no, by the letter of the law, technically, it was not lawful. According to Hebrew religious law, it was not lawful. To heal that, weather, that man's withered hand on the Sabbath. So yeah, they had the intent of the law in mind, but they were sticklers to the letter of the law while ignoring a need right in front of them. Jesus looked at each of those Pharisees, and you know he had to be grieved at their hearts, that they couldn't even allow him to do good on the Sabbath day. So what did Jesus do? He said to the man, stretch out your hand, and he heals the man's hand, even though it's the Sabbath. Clearly, from the original commandment that I just read, and from this passage that we heard Marcia read from the Gospel this morning, God's intentions for the Sabbath are for healing, for wholeness, for restoration, for renewal, and for life 
is a rest and relationship with one another and with our God. So we're here for this hour or so on Sunday morning to try to strengthen that relationship with our God. But what about the rest of our day? Yeah, the Pharisees, they were very overprotective of the Sabbath regulations. But friends, that's not our problem. Well, those first century Pharisees may have been following the letter of the law while missing the whole spirit of the law. Most of us here in the 21st century are nowhere near the ballpark of following the letter or the spirit of the law. Now, are we? You mentioned ballpark intentionally because we spent a lot of time in the ballpark on Sunday, uh, particularly. Well, is that good or bad? Uh, you know, we're, we're, just, we're just busy. There's so much going on. There's so many responsibilities we have in life. And that's just it. We need the Sabbath more than ever because we are too busy in our hectic lives. I really believe we have fallen into the trap of idolatry of productivity. And that's convinced us that our value is in what we can acquire in life. Or it's in what we produce in life. Or it's in what we can accomplish in life. The idea of pausing to rest and simply enjoy the moment. Or enjoy the day. Almost carries the guilt that we're not doing anything. Wait a minute. I'm, it, I'm, I'm being lazy if I'm just relaxing and enjoying the day. And resting and restoring myself. You know, I'm not accomplishing anything. <coughs> but friend, that's the point of the Sabbath. To be completely free of need to accomplish or produce anything. And that's sort of hard to do these days in our lives. To just relax and be free of the need to think. I should be accomplishing something right now. I should be doing something productive right now. No, the Sabbath is a time to rest. It's a time to restore. It's a time to heal. God didn't create it so that we could constantly accomplish tasks and produce things. Even good things. Yeah, we do need people to produce food. We do need people to prepare and cook food and to serve food and to clean up after that, certainly. Uh, we need uh, good literature, good books to read. We need entertainment. We need all those things to be produced. Uh, we even even need good sermons sometimes. We were created to delight in God. To enjoy God's creation. I've seen a couple of beautiful rainbows in the last uh, maybe you've seen it out there in the forest as well. I don't know. Yeah, we've seen some too down in the last couple of weeks, you know. Um, and we're also created to celebrate relationships with one another and with our God. Stretch out your hand is what Jesus said to the man in need. And on that Sabbath day, over 2,000 years ago, the man was healed. And you know what God is saying to you today? Stretch out your hand. Stretch out your clenched fist of need to do something and relax. Open your hand. Let go of what you need to do. Let go of what you need to accomplish. Let go of what you think you need to produce. Let go of your need to consume. Stretch out your hands and just be. Maybe just for one day a week. Or if we can't even manage that, even just for a few precious moments each day. Just be. Just enjoy. Just celebrate life. Rest. Marvel at God's great creation. Maybe go on a walk in the woods. Maybe 
sit on the floor with your children and just play. Not worry about anything else. Maybe you're just sitting and laughing with someone you love over a cup of coffee. Maybe you're just giving your undivided attention to your grandkids just for a few moments and enjoying that. Um, read a book that brings you peace. Paint if you enjoy painting just for the joy of painting. Make music or be quiet. Be alone. Or be in a relationship with someone that you love. Watch the stream roll by. Watch the waves lap on the pond or the lake. Listen to the birds sing. Even listen to the cicadas. <laughs> so they sing as well. For friends, the Sabbath was created as a gift for us. It's God's permission, God's commandment even, to stop and rest and live and breathe deeply and to celebrate. Celebrate what? Celebrate God. Celebrate others in your life as well. My prayer is that each one of us in our own ways that we accept that divine commandment to pause. That commandment for Sabbath. Carve out some sacred time and a sacred space in, in this hectic life that many of us lead so that we can bring some peace to our souls. So that we can bring some meaning back into our lives. So that we can bring purpose to these days that we live here in the 21st century. And because I know how busy the rest of your day is today, and that Monday's coming, this is going to be here, uh, I want all of us to take some time right now to think and to pray over how you might accept God's invitation to rest and to reconnect with yourself with others and with God. So, in the next 30 seconds of silence, I'm going to ask that you bow your head, close your eyes, and you can pray or you can just think. I want you to think about something you can do to add sad to your weekly rhythm. So take 30 seconds and pray over what you might do to slow down and to recreate Reconnect with our creator. Let us pray. I invite you now to gently bring your personal thoughts and prayers to a close. Or you can continue with them and just ignore what I'm saying. <laughs> Whatever suits you. You know, my friends, if you desire getting into a rhythm of Sabbath keeping, then you alone have the power to make that happen. I can't do it for you. Nobody else can do it for you. It's up to you if you want to follow the commandments. Uh, remembering the Sabbath and keeping it whole. Uh, I know that our, most of the time our days feel like they're just out of our, our control. That we've got to do this, we've got to do that, and you know, we've got to get these things accomplished. But let me assure you, there will not be a time in the future when it becomes easier and when you can find rest easier. Uh, you'll always have to make yourself do it. You have to carve out that Sabbath time for yourself. So try it this way. Try to figure out how to say yes to God's invitation to Sabbath. If nothing else seems to click, I encourage you to make time to spend five, oh, ten minutes, 
You have 10 minutes of the day this week. You can find 10 minutes somewhere to just completely unplug yourself. You know what that means? Turn your phone off. That means turn your computer off, turn the TV off, the radio off. Uh, no TV, no books. Don't be looking at a book for 10 minutes. No noise if you can avoid it besides the cicadas, uh, wherever you might be. Just 10 minutes in silence to let God's Spirit move within you and around you. We're still in the age of Pentecost. God sent His Spirit to us to empower us. Do you let that Spirit empower you? Do you feel the Spirit of God within you? Take 10 minutes a day. Turn everything else off. Get, every, get away from everything else so you're not distracted. Just 10 minutes. And focus on God. See if you can feel God's Spirit coming into you. And if you can, remember to stretch out your hand and be free to be who God created you to be. Not that busy, happy person. God created you to be in a relationship with God and with all of us. That's who we're all created to be. So, remember the Sabbath and keep it whole. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn of response this one is number 39, which we have sung a couple of times in the last few weeks, and we're going to sing it one more time today. It is Spirit of God, descend upon my heart as we close out this celebration of Pentecost. It's found on page 39 of your hymn, so let us rise, either in body or in spirit, and sing together the first, third, and fourth verses of number 39, the Spirit of God, descend upon my heart.
Christian affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, my Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uh, 
And I will tell you that a part of what we give every year is called the regular church budget is an apportionment, which means that based on the membership of our church, we give so much money based on each member uh, to our presbytery for the presbytery's work. So when you are contributing to our offering, our general offering here, just know that a portion of that money, uh, this church has been very good about meeting those apportionments every year uh, for 30 years. I forget what it was. We were, the church was given an award a couple of years ago because we meet our apportionments every year. And in addition to that, we give money for every special offering and have done so for, I think it was 30 years, 25 or 30 years. Uh, that we've never even, we've always given money for the special offering, which means you've given money for the special offering, and as well as meeting the apportionments of our church. There are a lot of churches that, when they have to come back on their budget, they come back that apportionment and they say, well, we're not going to give the presbytery this year. This church has never done that, as far as I know. So once again, that's due to your generosity in giving. You have another opportunity to give through the special offering of Presbyterian Church, which goes for, it, it explains the ministries that this special offering is for, for the Pentecost offering. But I just wanted to commend you as a church on the fact that you don't ever have to have a stewardship campaign. You're very, very generous with your giving, very generous to all of our many ministries here, and also very generous to the special offerings that are brought before us as well. This is your last chance to get to the credit to the Pentecost offering this year if you'd like to get something to that. For all the offerings that have already been given and for those that have yet to be received, let me offer this offertory blessing. Almighty God, we ask that you bless the offerings that are received this day. We ask that they be used for the furthering of your kingdom here in this community and around the world. We ask also that you use our talents, our hands, our feet, our voices, whatever it is that we have to offer in use for your ministries as well. It is in your holy name we pray. Amen. My friends, it's now time to approach this table. And as we approach the table, let me remind you that this is not my table. It's not your table. It's not a Presbyterian table. This is the Lord's table. And it is the Lord our Savior Jesus Christ that invites you to this table this day. All that we ask is that you believe upon the name of Jesus Christ and you are welcome here. For it is Jesus who invites you to the Lord's table. My friends, people come from north and south, east and west to gather around this table on Communion Sunday and on every day, whether morning, evening, or night, when Christians gather to commune together. There are people gathering around this world, around the world, around this table, and we are a part of that Christian gathering. And as we gather around this table, we are to remember we are to remember that fateful evening during that Holy Week when Jesus gathered one last time with his disciples for a meal. And they sat at a table. And as they sat at a table, they fellowshiped with one another, they talked with each other, they made plans for the future, they talked about what had happened in the past, and of course they had a meal together. And as they began that meal together, they, of course, were not aware that they were participating in what we now call communion, or the Last Supper that Jesus shared with his disciples while he was still a human being on this earth. And that's what we're about to share, my friends. So I ask you now to, to join with me in the Eucharist prayer, the responsive Eucharist prayer that you find printed in your book. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. O 
oh God, we now accept your invitation to this day. We come humbly, grateful for the grace that you have extended to us. We come to this table not because we deserve to be here, but because we need to be here. Sinners that we are, we come. Because we believe that your grace is for all, even for us. Our sins are wiped away. All our grudges are forgotten in the healing community we rejoice to be a part of as your body today. Around this table, we may have different ideas and have different ways of seeing the world, but through the transforming power of the Holy Spirit, we are all one now, today, here. As long as we remember who we are and whose we are, we will carry that holy sense of community with us. We ask that you be with those who are sick, who, are, who may suffer from illness or, or other conditions this day, especially those who are homebound and reside in care facilities. And especially be with those like Barbara who have recently lost loved ones. May your spirit descend upon her and all of those in need just as it's descending upon us at this time. So now we come to this table in the name of the one who invites all who are weary to find rest. So hear our prayers, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, who taught us how to live, how to build, and even how to pray as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And leave us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As Jesus and his disciples were gathered around that table on that last fateful evening, Jesus took the bread, and after returning thanks for it, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, for this bread now represents my broken body, broken for you for the removal of your sins. So whenever you eat of this bread, do this in remembrance of me. And they shared the bread around the table and partook of the rest of their meal together. And near the end of that meal, Jesus also took the cup And after returning thanks for the cup and blessing it, Jesus said, This cup represents the new covenant, the new agreement, the new binding between you and your God. For this cup represents my blood, which is to be shed for the sins of all, which is to be shed for your sins. So whenever you drink of this cup and eat of this bread, this do in remembrance of me. And Jesus then shared the cup around the table with all who were gathered there. My friends, our table has been prepared. It is Jesus Christ who now invites you to partake of this meal. And I will remind you as our elders come forward that as the bread is passed, it is our custom here that you hold the bread and wait until everyone has been served and we will partake of the bread together, recognizing our unity in Jesus Christ. And then when the cup is passed, you may partake of that at your leisure 
recognizing your individual relationship with your Lord and Savior as well. So now may our others first. to bring us joy and peace. So go in peace to stay, my friend. 